Hey, web developers, wondering what all this fuss around third-party cookies is about? Cookies are essentially pieces of text stored by your browser. They provide a website with quote-unquote memory and enable crucial user flows. OK, what about third-party cookies? The name may be a bit misleading. You'd think it is always another third-party company setting those and that you have no control over them. But here is the trick. Think of them as cross-site cookies. Imagine you own site.example and accounts.example. If accounts.example is embedded on site.example and uses cookies set in the top-level context of accounts.example, those cookies are still third-party, even though they are set and accessed by the same company. Sometimes sharing information across websites is useful. But third-party cookies can be used to track user activity and can lead to privacy and security vulnerabilities. That's the reason why third-party cookies may be blocked by users, enterprise policy, or browser design. But what does it mean for developers and their identity solutions? Well, some user flows may rely on third-party cookies. Relying on third-party cookies might exclude users who don't have access to them or have explicitly turned them off. Let's take a look at how you can ensure your identity solution works as expected for all of your users. First things first, not all cookies will cause breakages. Some identity flows rely on cookies that are set and accessed by the same site. If you don't embed any content, don't distribute embeddable cross-site widgets, and don't reuse the same session cookie across multiple sites, you probably don't need to update. But you still should investigate to make sure. The identity flows that may be impacted are those that rely on cross-site cookies. Let's take a look at some examples. In some cases, sites rely on third-party embeds, even though the user identity doesn't need to be shared across sites. Consider a support chatbot widget chat.example embedded on different sites, say flowers.example and cakes.example. The chat widget stores the user ID in a cookie to allow the widget to re-identify the user and resume a support case on sites where it is embedded. With third-party cookies blocked, chat.example won't be able to set a third-party cookie when embedded as a widget, and the support flow might be disrupted. Here is another example. Many solutions offer a convenient flow. Their users can access multiple services with a single account. For example, you might manage multiple services, health insurance, dental insurance, vet insurance, and they all rely on the same in-house solution, identity.example. This user journey is also known as single sign-on. If the user is locked into identity.example, but third-party cookies are not available, the reliance sites won't be able to automatically authenticate the user. What about social sign-ins or federated identity? Does your solution rely on a library that lets users sign in into their favorite social account? Or are you the owner of a social network that provides an identity solution? You may be relying on third-party cookies as well. Here is another user journey. Accessing authenticated embedded content may rely on the same mechanism. Say you want to let users enjoy subscription-only videos. You use contentprovider.example player embedded on recipes.example block. Contentprovider.example needs to know that the user has a subscription. And again, the provider may need to verify user identity with the information stored in a session cookie. This cookie is normally set in a top-level context of contentprovider.example. This cookie is treated as third-party when content provider is embedded on other sites. Another scenario that may be impacted includes authentication within top-level context. Imagine a user visits health.example, which embeds healthstats.example dashboard. The user data is managed by healthstats.example. The user has previously signed into health stats when visiting it as a top-level site. To render a health statistics dashboard, the health stats embed needs to validate the user identity, and for this, it uses a session cookie. 
If cookies are not available, the dashboard won't render as expected. Does one of the described flows sound similar to your site's user journey? It's time to make sure your solution can support all users, even those who don't have third-party cookies available. The best way to test cookie usage is to go through your identity flows with third-party cookies disabled. To disable third-party cookies in Chrome, go to DevTools, open Privacy and Security panel, go to the Controls tab, and enable temporarily limit third-party cookies. Make sure to relaunch Chrome. Test that every registration option you provide work as expected. Test that the user can sign in and sign out as expected, and login status persists whenever you navigate through your site or multiple sites. Make sure that password recovery works as expected. Test any other user journeys that may rely on third-party cookies. If you encounter any breakage, we encourage you to report it. Now that you know which user journeys need your attention and how to test them, let's take a look at the APIs that can help you transition away from third-party cookies. Let's go back to our support chat example. To support the user, flowers.example doesn't need to know anything about cakes.example support history for this user. Neither does the widget provided chat.example. In cases where the data can be isolated to the embedding site, adding the partitioned attribute to the cookie is the way to go. With chips or partitioned cookies, there is a separate cookie jar for each top-level site. The chat widget can set a partitioned cookie. This ensures that the user has access to their support history even when navigating through the site. Chips can only be accessed by the same exact embed embedder context they were set in. This means that a partitioned cookie set by chat.examples on flowers.examples will not be accessible from chat.examples on cakes.examples, and vice versa. Similarly, the widget provided chat.example alone will not be able to access the partitioned cookie set within the embedded context. Another API that you can use to support your identity flows is related website sets, or RWS. With RWS, you can declare relationships among related sites, including up to five associated domains and as many CCTLDs and service domains as you like. This looks like a perfect solution for our example with multiple related insurance services relying on the same in-house identity solution. Within a related website set, browsers that support RWS will allow limited third-party cookie access. So, RWS can enable single sign-on and other user journeys that rely on third-party cookies across a small number of domains. Another API that you might want to check out is the Storage Access API. Storage Access API allows embeds to request unpartitioned storage access permission from the user. Let's have a look at our example where the user logs into healthstats.example account with top-level context. The user goes back to health.example. Then, healthstats.example embed calls the storage access API. If the user approves, the embed can get access to the unpartitioned cookie that was set within the top level context. With this cookie, the embed can render as expected. Here is another solution Federated Credential Management or FedCM. It doesn't only help to transition away from third party cookies, but also offers a convenient one tap sign in experience. FedCM can allow the user to log in with the account managed by an identity provider. With FedCM, you can support social sign-in flows even for the users browsing without third-party cookies. Another cool feature, FedCM serves as a trust signal for the Storage Access API. It means that when an identity provider widget requests access to its top-level storage, the request will be automatically approved without an additional user prompt or gesture. This is helpful when an identity provider is also a content provider. Let's revisit our example where the user wants to access premium content from contentprovider.example on recipes.example. Say content provider is also an identity provider who implements FedCM. It lets users sign in to Reliance Sites with their Content Provider account. Recipes.example relies on this implementation. 
If content provider.example player widget needs to access its unpartitioned storage, its request will be automatically approved. The content will load as expected, even when third party cookies are blocked. Hope you've discovered some new APIs that will be useful for your identity solution. For more information, check out our identity guide or learn how Privacy Sandbox API can be useful for other use cases.